These 13 foods I'm going to show you in today's video have made such a difference in my almost 60 pound weight loss. And while food is the star of the show, knowing what to do with it is the practice we all need on a health and weight loss journey. For example, plan your meals in advance. It makes a huge, huge difference rather than shopping on the spot. Never go to the store hungry. I think that one goes without saying. If you know you're going to be tempted by a certain food that you really don't want to eat or that you're trying not to eat, don't buy it. We know our temptation is going to get the best of us, as well as you do not need to buy the whole supermarket. Just a couple things will do. We'll get more into it in this video. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Stasia, and in case you're new here, I've lost almost 60 pounds following a high fiber, whole food, plant-based diet. So today's video, I'm gonna be showing you 12 must-have foods that are almost always certainly on my grocery list from week to week. Now, I am no stranger to what it feels like to struggle with my weight. I've been so up and down all throughout my life, you know, really clung on to whatever the newest trend was in the dieting culture. I have been there and done it all. So when I say I can relate to what it feels like to be really frustrated and just really be over it and just wanting to get the weight off, I am not exaggerating. But with the foods I'm going to show you in today's video, these have been the ticket to getting almost 60 pounds off. All right, but before we jump into exactly what those foods are, you are not going to want to miss this next part because I am running a free giveaway on my brand new weight loss recipe ebook that includes 22 different recipes of my fiber protein shake. Now, a little bit of a twist, so hang on before you go running to click the link. The last few times that I've done a free giveaway, it is to the first five or 10 people that click the link. So this time I'm going to switch up the rules just slightly, just to make it a little bit fair for those of you who might not end up catching this video till maybe the next day or maybe two days later. So I'm gonna be giving away 10 copies of my brand new book called Shake Off the Weight. So the first five people to go down and click the link in my description box below, you will be the winners of the first five free copies but don't worry if you're not one of those first five you still have a chance of winning a copy because sometime over the next day or two I'm gonna hop back on there and I'm going to be giving away five more free books so it will be at very random so you'll just have to go down there and check it out yourself to see if there's still any free copies available and I would love it if you are one of the lucky 10 people to receive a copy to come back to my comments and let me know who you are and that you have received it and they are all in good hands Okay, but that's not it. If you're not lucky enough to be one of the 10 people to receive a free copy, it's okay because I am running an incredible blowout sale on all of my eBooks right now. So all of my older eBooks, which include amazing oil-free whole food plant-based recipes, all super simple recipes with ingredients you probably already have in your house right now, all of my older books are going to be on sale for only $5. And my two newest eBooks, which contain all of the recipes that I was eating to get this 57 pounds off, like it's literally like a blueprint to how I got this weight off. Those books are also going to be on sale for $8. So pretty much all of my books are on sale for under $10 right now. So if you're in need of some more recipes, you're just kind of lost, you don't know what the heck to eat or what to do with the foods, like the ones I'm gonna show you in today's video, then be sure to check out that awesome blowout sale on all of my books right now. Link will be found in the description box below and the sale will be running for the next 48 hours. So good luck to all of you guys and now let's get into this video. All right, so one food without a doubt that will always be on my grocery list or found inside my cupboards are potatoes. So this was just a smaller five pound bag potatoes that I grabbed and as you can see I'm almost running out. So I usually end up buying potatoes once every you know week or two weeks just depending on the size of the bag but I do go through potatoes quite a bit. Potatoes have been a huge part of my weight loss journey. When you remove all those overt fats or processed junk and you're just eating the potato as close to nature as possible they are one of the most perfect weight loss friendly foods that you can be eating. Potatoes are really high in fiber and that is the goal always when you're trying to lose weight. Protein and fiber, as most of us have heard many, many times, are where it's at when it comes to losing weight. Because of their fiber content, they're actually the number one satiating food in the world. So that tells you something. So when you're trying to lose weight, you want to be eating things that are actually going to keep you full so that you don't have to suffer through your weight loss journey. And that is definitely why these have been one of my favorite foods while getting this weight off. Okay, so my next high fiber food that is always, always on my grocery list as well are beans. I am a huge, huge fan of beans. So these are chickpeas and these are pinto beans. 
I also have black beans and I have soybeans soaking right now. And as you notice, I personally don't buy canned beans. Now you can buy canned beans. There's nothing wrong with canned beans. It's just a matter of preference for me. I used to buy them all the time actually. But as soon as I tried cooking dry beans in the Instant Pot, game changer. I just can't go back to canned beans. I find it just as easy to, you know, throw them in the Instant Pot because there's really no work there. And they just turn out as soft as butter. Like I'm not even exaggerating. So for me now, when I eat canned beans, it just kind of tastes a little bit on the hard side. Um, but at any rate, beans are a favorite of mine because they are full of both protein and fiber. And that is just the perfect marriage when you are trying to lose weight. So I have consumed beans almost every single day while losing the weight through my fiber protein shakes. Now, if it's your first time landing on one of my videos, you might be asking what on earth is a fiber protein shake or what is this girl talking about putting beans in a shake? Because yes, beans are the magic ingredient in my fiber protein shakes but I have to throw it out there that I promise you, you cannot taste them. So these shakes were something that I came up with on my own that just became an incredible part of losing the 60 pounds because I was able to add anywhere from a half a cup to one full cup of beans in these shakes. And they allowed me to stay full for at least three to four hours. They always carried me to my next meal. And this is why I think that they work so well. So this is why I stress that high fiber foods are where it's at when it comes to losing weight because I know between eating the potatoes and also eating these beans every single day through my fiber protein shakes, that those were probably the biggest, most helpful foods in all the foods I'm gonna talk about today in getting the weight off. I'm not gonna get too much into exactly what the fiber protein shakes are, but if you are interested in learning more about them, which I strongly recommend it because they helped me so, so much. Then I will have this video posted in my description box below. There's seven days worth of shakes in this video that you can watch for free here on YouTube. But because these shakes have been such a success, not only for me, but for so many of you who have given me such positive feedback with your results using these shakes, I went ahead and made my brand new weight loss recipe ebook, Shake Off the Weight. And there's 22 recipes in total, amazing flavors. So again, that book is also on sale right now if you wanted to check it out. So link is in the description box below for both the video and the book. Okay, so moving along to the next high fiber food that I love is quinoa. Now, quinoa wasn't something that I ate a ton of the first 30 pounds when I was losing weight. I ate a lot of potatoes and a lot of beans. I had rice bowls as well. Quinoa wasn't up there with one of the starches that I was eating, but I would say I've been eating a lot more of quinoa in the last 30 pounds that I've got off. So not the first 30, but the second 30 <laughs> that I've almost got off. It's 57 pounds to be exact. So quinoa, I have just fallen in love with it. I don't know. I'm kind of preferring it to rice even these days. I just love this brand in particular and it just turns out so fluffy, very similar to rice in a lot of ways, but I just love the nutritional profile on quinoa. And because it is higher in protein than rice, I again feel like it keeps me a lot fuller than especially a plate of like white rice if I were to compare it. And white rice is really the only rice that I actually enjoy eating. So quinoa is another high fiber food that I'm eating on rotation. And you will always find this on my grocery list if I'm at <laughs> okay, next we have sweet potatoes and I really should have put this up there with the other potatoes But I should mention that these foods are not coming in any particular order I love them all and have them all all the time Anyways, so here are some sweet potatoes. I also love sweet potatoes Arguably maybe even a little bit better than regular potatoes Ah, it's a tough one. It just depends what I'm in a mood for, but I love them both. I also love making sweet potato fries. Sweet potato fries are amazing. And I actually have a video how to make the best oil-free sweet potato fries. You will not miss the oil. Actually, you'll be surprised that there isn't any oil because they're so crispy on the outside while still being soft on the inside. A little bit of sweet and sour sauce or, you know, vegan ranch sauce that you could whip up is incredible incredible with these. Sometimes I'm so shocked that even some of the foods that we're able to eat in this lifestyle, you know, are actually great for weight loss. Sometimes I just have a hard time wrapping my head around it because I'm like, this tastes so good and yet it's healthy for me and it's helping me lose weight. Just a win-win. So sweet potatoes are definitely a high fiber food that I always have on rotation. Okay. So the next high fiber food I have on the list are oats. These are incredible for so many different reasons. Can we just start off by saying that in today's economy, they are incredible in terms of price wise. 
Oh my gosh, they're so cheap for such a large amount of food. This bag here, I think was like $2.99 and will last me quite some time. The other thing I love about oats is how versatile they are. You can make them sweet or savory. So a lot of the times we just hear about, you know, oatmeal in the morning with, you know, fruit or brown sugar or, you know, vanilla milk on it or whatever. It's always on the sweet side. But you might be surprised to find out that you can actually make them on the savory side. You can add in a ton of savory spices. You can actually mix in like onion and garlic like it really takes on whatever flavor you give it and a lot of people don't know that and the other thing I love about oats are just the convenience of them unlike a lot of the other starches this is one of the fastest cooking starches out there so these are amazing when you're in a pinch you don't have food ready you're really hungry you can whip up a full meal in under five minutes with oats unlike you know potatoes or rice or quinoa and these other starches that take a lot more time to cook so often many times when I don't have something to make and I'm really, really hungry, I will have oatmeal and not just for breakfast. I will have oatmeal, you know, for dinner or for lunch. So definitely don't be afraid of stepping outside of, you know, only having oats for breakfast. You can use these as something in your back pocket when you're really, really hungry. You don't know what you're going to eat. Oats will have your back. All right. So the next high fiber food I'm going to talk about is my bread. Now I want to say the first 30 pounds, I also didn't really eat any bread, but the second 30 pounds that I've got off, I did start to include some back and this is the only bread that I really ate. So I like to keep this in my freezer, which I'm going to have to throw it back in because it's starting to defrost. But at any rate, there are eight grams of fiber and 12 grams of protein in two slices. That's pretty remarkable for bread. And this bread is all sprouted grains as well, as well as being organic. So this is my favorite go-to bread. I get this from my local health food store. I really love this one and I've been making some beautiful, beautiful healthy sandwiches with this bread. So this is also something that you will always find on my grocery list. Okay, so this next one is not the most common thing and maybe will come even as a little bit of a shock, but this is something that has been on rotation in my house as well as I know will continue to be on rotation all throughout the summer because I am currently a little bit obsessed with making my fresh spring rolls. So I will be putting out a video very, very soon showing how exactly I make these fresh spring rolls. They are something that I have been thoroughly enjoying for lunchtime. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, now would be a good time to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss that video because I tell you, these things are amazing to the point that I could eat them every single day. Like they're just one of those foods that I just can't get sick of. So at any rate, these rice wraps only have three ingredients, which is rice, water, and salt. That's it. So they're pretty natural, pretty pure, and it's what I put inside of them where the magic actually is created. I love adding fresh herbs. I love adding organic sprouts to them, you know, and then dipping it in some type of nice sauce. It is just... Oh my gosh, so much flavor. But again, I'm gonna be putting out a video very soon showing you exactly how I make them. But because I love them so much, you will definitely find this on rotation on my grocery list over and over again. Okay, and speaking of sprouts and greens in my fresh rolls, here are my sprouts and greens. So I have been loving the broccoli sprouts, or I should say microgreens. I've recently just learned the difference between sprouts and microgreens, which I literally thought they were the same before, but apparently not. But at any rate, these are my broccoli microgreens that I've been loving. I also get the pea microgreens, as well as this is a super blend of lettuce, arugula, pea shoots, or Mizuna, whatever Mizuna is, I don't even know, but you know what, we're going for it anyways. <laughs> so this is just a blend of different greens. So when it comes to my greens, I like eating them as just a regular old salad or throwing it in a green smoothie. So, so those are the top two ways that I like to get my greens in. And then when it comes to the microgreens or any type of sprouts, I love, love, love eating these as a replacement for lettuce on my sandwiches, on my wraps, and of course in those fresh rolls that I was just talking about. And speaking of wraps, if you are not eating bread, then one thing that I forgot to mention that I do eat a lot of were my oat wraps. They're my two ingredient oat wraps. These have been amazing. So if you're trying to avoid bread, if you are gluten-free, these are perfect and you can whip them up at home in like two seconds. 
They are so easy and such clean ingredients. So I love throwing sprouts on these wraps and just making a whole nice sandwich out of them. So if you're interested in checking out that video, I will also have that linked in my description box below. But yeah, I've been loving getting the sprouts and microgreens in just because again, their nutritional profile is so much better than even, you know, a head of romaine lettuce or, you know, iceberg lettuce or just any of the regular lettuces. So anywhere I would have lettuce, whether it's in tacos or sandwiches or wraps or anything, I've just been throwing these microgreens in. Okay, so another food that you are always going to see on my grocery list, like always, are bananas. Now this is a reusable freezer bag of mine and I gotta get these back in the freezer because they are also starting to melt. But I usually have about two to three bags of this size full of frozen bananas at all times. It is probably safe enough to call me the banana lady at this point because anytime I go to Costco or the grocery store, I always have a cart full of bananas because we go through them so fast. A lot of that is to do with the fiber protein shakes because both myself and my kids drink them almost every single day and coffee crisp and the vanilla birthday cake. Those are my two top flavors and Snickers. Yeah, I'd say it's a close call between all three of those, but at any rate, those shakes call for frozen bananas. So I always, always, always make sure to have bananas on hand for all of those fiber protein shakes, as well as often I will make a green smoothie and throw some bananas in those as well. So bananas are certainly something that if I'm running low on, I will make a special trip to go to the grocery store just to grab them. That's how important they are around this house. All right, so the next high fiber foods I'm gonna talk about are frozen veggies. Now, these are currently my two favorites. So this is frozen broccoli from Costco. I love this brand. I don't know what they do different, but it just tastes so amazing compared to any other frozen broccoli that I buy. And my second favorite green frozen veggie right now are edamame. And my sister put me onto this. I had never even really eaten edamame before, and now I'm completely obsessed with it. Now these ones are naturally a little bit higher in fat, so I do make sure that I keep it to a minimum because I could probably sit down and eat this whole bag if I really wanted to, but I'm mindful of the fat content, so I just make sure that I eat, you know, a portion or two rather than the whole bag. But at any rate, edamame are also very high in protein. So these are an excellent green, but any green that you enjoy, if you're able to get it frozen, then it's even that much easier because you know it's cost effective, it's not going to go bad, and it's just so easy to throw frozen veggies you know, in a steamer or in a pot of a little bit of water, and there you go. You have some type of non-starchy veg to go with whatever starch you already have made. That's the magic in making these meals is having, you know, your starch is kind of all ready to go and then you can just, you know, easily throw some frozen veggies together and you've got a whole plate together in about 10 minutes. And another side tip I'm gonna mention is that you don't have to buy a thousand different types of veggies. I'm personally trying to get into the habit of picking two, maybe three tops on one grocery bill, you know, and just eating those all week long and then maybe the next week switching it out for something else or maybe not. If I'm still not sick of them and still enjoying it, then I'll just get the same thing. But you know, in the past I used to try to buy like a thousand different veggies and fruits and you know, think that I needed them all just on that one major grocery shop. So I'm learning to scale it back a little bit and just pick two or three veggies that I'm gonna eat per week. Okay, so the next food that's always on my grocery list is going to be milk plant-based milk at that. Now, a lot of people have asked me over the years, which one do you use, Stasia? Which one? And, you know, people get really nitpicky about the details of, you know, what's in these milks. I know that this one is not the best brand out there, but it is the cheapest one that I can afford right now. So I have also bought the better brands that are, you know, cleaner, less ingredients. Here in Canada, or at least at my health food store, they're super expensive. Like they're like $7.99, $8.99 for a carton and a small carton, much smaller than this. Um, and I just can't keep up with that, especially when I use milk as much as I do for my fiber protein shakes, you know, and I'm not just making them for myself, I'm making them for the kids. So what I say is this, we do the best that we can. Not all of us can afford $10 cartons of milk, you know, even these are $5.99 at this point. It's, it's expensive, especially when they're a food that you go through a lot. So for me, I've really learned to just not sweat the small stuff. So I do what I can, I do the best I can. I already feel like I'm winning because for years I have not bought dairy milk, you know, no cow's milk or anything. So I do the best that I can. Oftentimes it's just, you know, this stuff or whatever's on sale, but vanilla plant-based milk is definitely something that you will find on my grocery list every single week. 
All right, so we're getting to the end here. So the second last thing I'm going to show you that is always on my grocery list now is tofu. Now, again, this was not something that I was eating a lot of the first 30 pounds. Um, tofu is something that's kind of been a new addition in these past 30 pounds. I've enjoyed bringing tofu back into my diet because obviously it's an excellent plant-based source of protein. So I've really enjoyed bringing this back, but much like the edamame, because it does have a naturally higher fat content to it, I also am mindful of my portions when it comes to tofu but I've really enjoyed bringing it back into my diet. One of my favorite ways to eat it, well actually I have two. One are my deli slices. If you haven't seen this video on how to make your own homemade vegan deli slices, you have to check this video out. I will have this posted in my description box below as well for you. These deli slices are mwah, like absolutely incredible. They taste amazing. So that's my first favorite way of eating tofu. My second way is to have it air fried. You literally don't have to do anything to it. Now you can add some lovely spices to it, whatever spices you like, sprinkle it on, throw it in the air fryer, away you go. Or you can literally just slice it into, you know, whatever type of slices you want it to be or cubes, however you like it, throw it in the air fryer and do absolutely nothing to it. And to me, it tastes amazing just like that as well. So those are my two favorite ways of eating tofu. But yeah, this is something that you will see on my grocery list every single week. All right, so we've made it to the last food. If you're still hanging out with me, then thanks for making it this far in the video. Now, this one might surprise some of you because getting those first 30 pounds off and even pretty much up until, you know, the first 50 pounds off, I removed all overt fats out of my diet. So this one is a recent addition. And I have been talking a lot about this on my channel, as well as in my comments, you know, all the time telling people that I strongly believe in the importance of omega-3s in our diet. So when I removed all of my overt fats out of my diet, that was one of the number one questions I would get. Well, Stasia, what about omega-3s? And I would always respond the same, that I'm a firm believer that we do need to get our omega-3s in. So flaxseed and chia seed, walnuts, those are some of the best ways to obtain plant-based omega-3s. So with that being said, I have started to add about a tablespoon of flaxseed into my diet every single day. And I'm so happy to be able to say that because I wasn't able to do it before due to gallbladder issues, but now I am able to add it and I'm so, so happy because I really, really believe that omega-3s have a very important part in our diet. So I am thrilled that I'm able to add flaxseed back into my diet and this will definitely be something that will be on rotation and on that grocery list the moment I run out. All right, everyone, so that's it. Those are 13 foods that you will always find on my grocery list. If you have any questions or comments about those foods, then don't be shy to drop it in my comments below. I'm happy to answer them. I have really just found that by incorporating a lot of the foods that I showed you in today's video, that they have been a game changer in helping me to get this weight off. Now, I also wanna say that these are foods that I enjoy. These are foods that have worked for me, but I also like to stress that health is not a one size fits all. A weight loss journey is not a one size fits all. So I wanna stress that these are the foods that I liked and that worked for me. But I will always encourage you to find and to eat the foods that feel the best to you. In order for any health and weight loss journey to be successful, you really have to enjoy what you're eating. Like that point is so important. I can't stress it enough because if you're just choking down food that someone else recommended that you should be eating or someone else said that they ate and you're just trying to do the same thing, but you actually, you know, just can't stand the food that you're eating, you are not going to be able to sustain that. So that's why it's so important to just play around with it a little bit. It does take some trial and error sometimes, but once you figure it out, then it's like, it's just gonna click. Everything is just gonna come together and start making sense for you, I promise. So be on a hunt of finding those high fiber, high protein plant-based foods that you enjoy and that can also keep you full to support you on your weight loss journey. And once again, if you do need some help putting those foods together or figuring out what the heck to eat, then be sure to check out that awesome blowout book sale. That link will be found in the description box below. Those recipes changed my life and my hope is that they will change yours as well. Thanks so much for watching everyone. If it's your first time landing on my video, then be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out so that you don't miss any of my future videos. We'll see you guys in the next one.